Love 99.5 FM Taking you closer there to heaven There is time for everything And so is the time for everybody So be careful how you treat others in your time For very soon it will be their turn The God who changes the times and seasons The one who enthrones and dethrones kings Will lift them up For this is a fact of life. Let's go. Emra sisa sisa, Emra dia dania dania oh, enti ne abombiya. Enso ni pepe ba ne. Emra sisa sisa. To heaven. Welcome to Daily Focus on Love 99.5 FM. Prepare your mind and soul for today's message. Daily Focus on Love 99.5 FM. Start your day right with a word from God. With Hi, welcome to Relevant Life, a program brought to you by Mid Country Chapel to encourage, motivate, and bring this generation closer to God. 
Relevant Life is proudly sponsored by Age in Pharmacy Swami Marco, ZTH Company Limited, Asafo and Amakum, Morton's Pharmacy, TUC Junction. Stay tuned as our head pastor, Reverend David Kwanza, brings you today's message. Isaiah 63, I will start reading from the verse number one. The title of our message is Breakthrough by the Blood of Jesus. Isaiah 63, verse one. And, and this week, that's what is going to happen. You're going to break through. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to break through. You're going to break through in the name of Jesus. You are breaking through this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. Please, I want you to underline that particular statement. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. It means that he's going with full capacity. He's running on all cylinders. He's not left any ounce of his power behind. What he seeks to do, all his power is backing it to be accomplished. Now, that would be a serious business because there are varying things that God does. But for this particular one, there is no reserve power. There is no power left behind. In the maximum of the strength, he's going forth to accomplish this. I don't know what on earth would demand heaven's full force to move before it could be done. I don't know what, what, kind, of a, what, what kind of a pursuit is that. I, I have no idea. I wonder, what is it on earth that when heaven set forth to do, it had... He had to galvanize all its force and potency in order for that to be done. It means that God means serious business about this particular thing. It means that there is no turning back. Heaven has decided and earth does not even have a choice. It's got to be done. The plan of God must be accomplished. But they saw him in Edom and he came through Bozra. The Bible says that I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. So this mission was to save. This mission that demanded all heaven's power was to bring salvation and liberty and deliverance to humanity. That's amazing. It means that God has done everything he can and everything in his power to bring salvation unto man. The meaning of Edom is red. The meaning of Bozra is sheepfold. Now, it's amazing because Edom was the habitation of Esau, the son of Isaac that did not impress him at all. But in this particular prophecy, Isaiah shows a pistique nature of how the work is going to be. Let me show you how it is. It's like all of us are in the room. Suddenly somebody just pushed in and enters. When he entered, we see blood all over him. He's completely red. And he's standing there with eyes that are on fire. A person that is signifying trouble running from something he is very vicious and is very angry and is coming forth when you read the verses on i don't have time today but that is the picture that Isaiah paints to us he's coming in full of blood and his plan is to bring salvation and every resource of heaven's strength was with him edom signifies betrayal it was a family in confusion how can a woman betray her, his, her first son and then make another one look like him because he or she liked Jacob and decided that the blessing must go on to him. So when you talk about Edom, you're talking about a betrayed people, a, betray a place of betrayal, a place where somebody feels that they are not loved, they are not cared for. Edom represents supplanting of somebody's authority and power. And that was the nature of Jacob. He would do everything possible to take the power from the other person. One family. Esau's life was so full of so many disappointments. It don't represent disappointment. Because the father himself was so disappointed in Esau about his lifestyle. So a family in conflict. Somebody loves somebody better than the other. And I always tell parents that do everything possible to love all your children the same. It's going to be a tight rope to walk, but it is possible. Sometimes you begin to realize that your heart is going in a certain direction for a particular child and you have to rebuke yourself and then begin to draw back because your children should never grow up thinking that mom loved him more than all of us. So it stands for betrayal. It stands for supplanting power. 
it also stands for disappointment and for the guy himself as Esau, Edom represents a wayward life. He never wanted any control. He wanted to be his own man, be himself, champion of his own destiny, captain of his own life. He didn't care what mom thinks, what dad thinks. And he ended up losing his birthright and losing everything that God wanted to do in his life. Come with me right now to the book of Genesis 25 and the verse number 25. And, 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 and you're breaking through in the name of Jesus. Break out, break through, break through, break through, break through in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has gone wrong in life, you could see it in Edom. Nothing was going to work. In Genesis 25, verse 25, and the first came out red. He saw all over like an hairy garment. He was red all over. And they called his name Esau. The verse number 30. 30th verse, please. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. It's, it's amazing, you see? <laughs> his name is red. When you see red stuff, give me some of that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called what? Edom. So the habitation of Edom or the habitation of Esau was Edom. A place of desperation, own choices, own way of life, not under any authority. Doesn't care what mom feels, dad feels. It's his life. Captain of his own destiny. Charting his own course. Believing his own mindset. Whether it's going to be productive or not, he believes it. I've always said that the only promises I believe in are the promises whose end I see. And it doesn't come from men. Every promise that you see, its end is the promise you have to go for. And God is the only one that makes promises and he never changes his mind. So you believe in promises that are made by people, you're going to be disappointed. You must see the end of a promise. How's it going to end? Thank God for promises made by men, but please don't put your head on it. But when you can see the end, you go for it. For he said all his promises are yea and they are what? They are amen. If God has said it, you go and go for it in the name of Jesus. Yet in the same Edom, the Bible says that this man whose garment is dyed in red is going to come out from Bozrah. Bozrah is the capital of Edom. It is the heart of that nation. Bozrah also means sheepfold, God's vineyard. It's amazing how God operates and how he thinks. He goes to a place that is filled with all the nasty stuff that can happen to humanity. And there he starts his sheepfold. He begins to rebut the place. He begins to change what the enemy has done. He's looking for a place and he's not looking for where the all righteous and holy and pure people. He goes to Edom and says that I'm going to change that place to my sheepfold. Now he so might have done all so, so many mistakes and he's got all many things wrong about his life. And I know that some of you feel like Esau. You feel like you've been betrayed. You feel like you didn't make the right choices. You feel like you are not loved the way you're supposed to be loved. And you feel like the family, you are the kind of a black sheep among them. This morning I have a message for you. You feel you have got a terrible life, disappointed life. You've been a failure. You've not been who you want to be. You feel like you've made all the wrong choices and the results are staring at you today. I came to you with a message that in the same kind of situation, God is changing it and he's turning it into his own sheepfold. He's making it a place of his habitation. He's making it a place where he's going to gather people and bring a new life out of the place. It tells me why God went to Nazareth. He went to Nazareth. A people with a crooked life. A people that have no religious significance in Israel. He's looking for a virgin. All over the land of Israel. He goes to the most crooked place. The Bible says that the people of Nazareth. Have very very bad cruel immoral life. And they were not regarded by anybody. And there God found a virgin. You, you have to be careful when you walk with God. Anything the devil has told you is doing in your life. Whatever imagination about your own life that he has planted in your spirit. And you believe it. And you think that's who you are. I came to tell you that the king of kings and the lord of lords and the messiah is coming out of Bozrah in the mighty name of Jesus. He changed the same bad place into a sheepfold. So I'm going to go there. And that's why the prophet said, who is he that is coming like that? Revelation 19 verse 13. Look at this carefully. God changes situations. 
That's why no matter who you are, I believe you can come to the house of God. No matter who you are, come, come to the house of God. Come because God is going to change it into a sheepfold. God is going to turn that situation around. And I'm one of the first that can tell you that God turned my situation around. And I know I've got tens of people in this place whom God has changed their lives and turned their stories. Am I, am I preaching at the right place? Is there somebody here that God has done something for? He turned your morning into dancing. He took the tears from your eyes and planted joy on your mouth. Is there somebody here like that? He turned the darkness into light and took the miry clay off your feet and set you upon a solid rock. In the next six months, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord set your feet on a solid rock to stay in the name of Jesus. And the Lord give you that kind of maximum hope in your spirit that you have him and everything is going to be all right. The same place of the... No, nobody wants to call their son Esau. Nobody wants to relate to him. But God went to the same place to turn it to his vineyard. So watch your life and watch yourself. What do you call yourself? What do you allow the devil to call you? Because in the coming years, in the name of Jesus, the power is with those who allow the Lord to turn their lives around. And your life is turning around right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He came out of Basra and God knew it was a pastoral city. It was a place with so much significance in Edom. And God was going to come from there. I thank God he did not come from Jerusalem. He was going to come out of the rough places, the places you never expected. Lives that you never thought is going to turn up into anything. For some of you siblings, your parents are looking at some of your siblings that are here and there and there and there. God will shock them. The blessing of that family is coming from the member of the family in Mid Country Chapel. I pray that the Lord put that oil upon your head in the name of Jesus. Revelation 19, 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the Lord. So this person that is all red in his apparel and he's come to stand in Edom from Bozrah. This man is Jesus Christ. And his mission was about salvation. Bringing many to the knowledge of God. Now let me tell you this. This was planned thousands of years before the world was made. If you are listening to me, if you are watching me, and you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to tell you today that the plan of Jesus to deliver and save you was planned before the world was made. What does that mean? It means that it is a very powerful goal in the pursuit of God. When he was coming to create the world, he knew what was going to happen. And there had already been the plan as to how we're going to enforce this vision to come to pass. Okay? So if you live today and you don't know Jesus, and you are thinking that, you know, I know what I want to do, I have my life, I know what I'm going to do, you're missing a lot. God foresaw your future. And he knew that the only way you live in peace and live the life he wants you to live is to have this salvation that the maximum strength of the heavens is released to go and accomplish. So you can see why people and why lives become distorted and destroyed. And I, and I want to say this because you see, somebody might not go to church, somebody might not care about Jesus Christ, and they've got money, they've got factories, they've got buildings, and you look at this, oh, wow, they're having a good life. Life is more than possessions. I heard an occult saying that without the word of God and the blood of Jesus, the world is nothing. You know what it means? All the edifices, skyscrapers, inventions, aeroplanes, are ships and cars in their best form, companies, corporate organizations, every one of them will not be in existence if it was not for the blood of Jesus and the word of God. That is always intervening and I'll show you an example of that. If the enemy set his eyes on any civilized society to destroy the place like he has done, we saw some in Syria, in Aleppo, we saw some now in Ukraine, we saw what the first world war, second world war did to Germany. It doesn't matter when the bombs were landing on Berlin, Germany was where Presbyterian church came from. So the enemy sets his eyes on a place. It doesn't matter how developed the place is. If the blood of Jesus and the word of God doesn't intervene, that place will be destroyed. I'm a Presbyterian by birth. So he said, this all called this, who's changed? He said that this whole world, it's nothing. You chase gold, you chase silver, 
You church, what, what, what are you looking for? It's all nothing. The one thing that sustains all of it is the word of God and the blood of Jesus. So if God planned so many years before you were born that you're going to need salvation before he created the world and things began to mess up because he's the all-knowing God. He knows the beginning to the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. You don't have God and you think you are okay. One day I had my greatest shock in life. One of the most rich people that I have seen and known in Kumasi called me. I've told that story time and time again. When he called me to come to his home, I went with mommy. And we got to his house around 5 45 a.m. Because he told us that he leaves home by 6.30. So we got to his gate between 5.45 or 5.30 and 6.15. We were still at the gate. And uh, I had called him that we were there. And he said he's coming. 45 minutes to 50 minutes later, the gate was open. And when the gate was open, he came and said, Pastor, man of God, I'm so sorry. I was waiting for my dogs to be kept in their room. He has all the money, but he's afraid of his own dogs. He said, I leave home very early in the morning. I come back very late, so they don't know me. He buys food for the rich man, real estate. Many buildings in Kumasi are his. He opened us. We went into his dining hall. On his dining table were all sorts of bags and sacks and bottles. Filling this big round table. And it was all full of drugs. When we had our conversation and he came to what is on the table, he told me that, Pastor, you know, all these are different medicines and pills and concoctions I drink. He showed me one particular one. He said that if I don't take this drug by 2 p.m., I would die today. So after we were just about to leave, he will pick a polythene, one of these small polythene sacks. Okay, the Ziploc ones. Then you take this one, this one, you put it in and zip it up. You take one, you put it in, you take some of the water. Some is water, some is alcohol, some is beverage. He makes his things with. I prayed with him and Left. This world is nothing without salvation. I, I know people that who live, amen, on injections and pills. Mission of salvation is so important to God that all strength in heaven is deployed to accomplish it. And men must respond to it. Men must grab it with their double hands. Men must cry for it, go for it. And the thing about God is that when it comes to salvation, he doesn't care where you're coming from and what you have done. Your past is not part of what he's thinking. What he wants to do is to pull you out of that damage, salvage your life and set you up for a glorious future. And a glorious future you're going to have in the name of Jesus. Now look at the next verse of that scripture again. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Three, we read the verse number one. Let's go to the verse number two. God is at it and he's working. He's going to do it. God is going to watch over, over you. Uh, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garment like him that treadeth in the vineyard or in the vine fat. The, the thing about the work of salvation is that the most important agent of the salvation of man is the blood of Jesus. The blood was going to enter into uncommon places like Esau and turn those lives into God's own people. It tells us the significant power of the blood of Jesus in your life. That element is the one instrument that had to be poured. It had to be poured. Jesus had to die. He had to shed his blood for your life to be reorganized. And because of the power of the blood, I don't care what family you are coming from. Okay, And I don't care how your past has been in the name of Jesus. Because the blood was shed in Jesus' name, you're going to have a breakthrough life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you what a breakthrough life is. You have what you desire to have. You are who you desire to be. You can go to where you desire to go to. Nothing stop you from getting what you like. I prophesy a breakthrough life over you. Right now in the name of Jesus. Where barriers are confronting people. You get to the barrier and they open up. You don't push. You don't break. They open up. In the name. Somebody is having a life. Where every defeat in your life. You are breaking free out of it. That whatever you need in life is coming your way. It's coming your way. It's coming your way. You're not going to rise for it. They're going to come to you. God said, I give you an expected end. He didn't say, I would take you to an expected end. I'm bringing it. I'm giving it unto you. Somebody receive an expected end in the name of Jesus. Somebody receive a breakthrough life. To be a pastor, I understood that you must have breakthrough ministry. It means that you can be anywhere in the world. Go wherever you want to go. God has opened the doors. The Lord opened doors for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blood brought the breakthrough. Breakthrough comes out of the blood. It doesn't matter how filthy a place is. Once the blood is introduced, good things are going to come out of it. 
And so stop worrying, stop complaining, stop thinking that you were born by the wrong family. Stop thinking that life has not been fair to you. Stop thinking that things have not gone well for you. Where there is Edom, there is Bozra. Where there is darkness, there is light. As somebody in this place, come out of every kind of thing you are in. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see you break out from the defeat. In the name of Jesus, somebody is breaking out from the disease. That disease that has ravaged your body, you don't know what it is. Or even if you know what it is, it keeps coming and coming and coming. There is a breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus, I see a breakout from depression. Somebody is going to be happy. Somebody is going to be glad. Somebody is going to be joyful. You are filled with the oil of gladness. There is a testimony for you. Receive it right now. Your joy is coming back. It doesn't matter where it went uh, and where it go, it's gone. Your joy is coming back. Your gladness is coming back. The oil of gladness is upon you. Uh, receive that oil. Receive that unction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, everything was in chaos but the Lord turned it into his own vineyard your life is turning uh, all the chaos is seizing uh, all the disappointment is going away all trouble is fleeing from you God is turning it uh, God is turning it I don't know if you feel it but God is turning it he's turning it to his own dwelling place and where God is there is peace there is love there is joy there is abundance in the name of Jesus I prophesy about Abundance into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I see a breakout, a breakout from depression, escaping death. Your soul is escaping her, your body is escaping her in the name of Jesus. Uh, the traps of death, uh, all snares of death, you are escaping from it right now. You shall not die, you're gonna live, you're gonna see God's salvation this week in the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord come uh, into your instance and into your life yeah are you here today the lord turned the story around the lord take away the shame of edom the lord turned the shame of esau in the name of jesus the lord fill the empty places the lord bring glory and joy to your life are you ready for this uh, lift up the right hand and shout yes wherever there is edom there will surely be a buzzer. Wherever there is confusion, peace will invade there. Oh, you saw death. I see life. You saw diseases. I see healing. You saw defeat. I see favor. And I see success. And I see a profitable situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Stories are changing. Breakout is taking place in the name of Jesus. I command and I declare into the realms of the spirit about your life uh, where there is no way and the things that are responsible making sure that there is no way there is a breakout there is a breakout there is a breakout there is a breakout now 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 in the name of Jesus a breakout a breakout a breakout healing for sickness deliverance from death in the name of Jesus financial freedom uh, in the name of Jesus debts are being paid in the mighty name of Jesus I see a breakout from disgrace they wanted to disgrace you the Lord has delivered you he's taking away your shame he's taking away your mourning and he's turning it into dancing he's filling your life with the abundance of his favor abundance of his grace you're going to be unbreakable unstoppable irresistible in the mighty name of Jesus the river of God run upon your life somebody's story is changing right now in the mighty name of Jesus and it's not going to be like that forever. Basra is declared. Basra is declared. Basra is declared. And nobody wanted Esau. God himself said that I hate Esau. But he changed the story. That's the beautiful thing about God. So don't mind God. When he says something about your life that he doesn't like. He's going to solve the problem. He doesn't abandon you. He said that Esau I never lied. But I'm going to turn his dwelling into my sheepfold the Lord make you where he lives may the presence of God be on your life all 
out this year as you march into the next six months uh, i pray that the presence of god would daily be felt in your life you will see his strength uh, and his might uh, all over you uh, zephaniah said the lord thy god in the midst of thee he is mighty i pray the might of god the full strength of god be felt in your life this six months uh, and into the next year in the mighty name of jesus can i speak to circumstances can i address the changing times can i address the hardship though the earth be moved uh, and the mountains be shaken uh, we're not going to be moved uh, because god is with us though there is hardship uh, and though there are challenges and all over the place uh, we have seen how life has become and the unbearing nature of the cost of living but god is with us dollar high dollar low our god is with us ukraine russia whatever our god is with us he's making a way what there seem to be no way a story is changing now your story is about to open another page of celebration and thanksgiving unto god by the power of god i prophesy freedom and liberty break out in your life in the name of jesus in every area of your life there's a breakthrough there's a breakout not the capire so it doesn't matter who you are what you have experienced where you have been get to the house of god because that lord commands blessings even life forevermore it doesn't matter what you have been through in life in the name of jesus god turns edom to his sheepfold and that's you and it's a work of the blood the blood is still speaking and the blood is speaking for isaac and the blood is speaking for priscilla the blood is speaking for Pastor David. The blood is speaking for Pastor Brian. The blood is speaking for Pastor David. It is speaking for Pastor Kinsley. The blood is speaking for everyone in this room. Because God will show up. And it doesn't matter how corrupt and how bad the place is. He's ready to turn it to a sheepfold. You're going to be an example of God's favor. You're going to show the world that God is alive. I love Christianity because of this. A songwriter said that he turned my morning into dancing and set my feet on a solid rock to stay. I don't know where you are standing right now, but there's one thing the prophet knows. I shift your feet from the miry clay and from all slippery places, all poverty places, all dead places, all wilderness. I shift your feet right now from all the miry clay. I shift your feet from trouble. I shift your feet from defeat. I shift your feet from all manner of problems. And I set your feet. I set your feet. I set your feet now. Right now. Stand on your feet. I set this feet. Heavenly Father. I set this feet right now upon a solid rock. This feet of yours are shifting from death from death and uncertainty your feet are shifting uh, from every form of trouble in the name of jesus you are breaking out you are walking out as i'm walking right now i take your feet uh, from every slippery places and i set it on a solid rock in the mighty name of jesus praise be unto the name of the lord it's always an honor to come to you at such a time of your day to bring you such truth, to bring you such light and word of the Lord, to begin your day with and to construct your day, your week, and the months coming with the word of the Lord. My name is Reverend David Seth Kwansa. I'm the head pastor of Mid Country Chapel. We meet at a Macomb traffic light opposite the children's park. And uh, every Sunday, our services start at 7 a.m. Uh, to 9.15. That is the first service. And the second service starts at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. We invite you to come and fellowship with us. We invite you to come and worship with us. It's a season where God is doing powerful things in spite of the challenges that our world is going through. And so we're honored to have you tuning in to our broadcast and being part of this. I invite you every Thursday morning at exactly 5.20 on Love FM to come and be part of this. The Lord bless you so much. I'll be waiting for you at church. We have meetings also on Wednesday evenings at exactly 6 o'clock, which ends at 8. 
The Lord bless you and have a wonderful day. We'll be with you again. Bye-bye. You can also be a part of this great ministry by joining through sponsoring. To sponsor, please call 0244-461-471. Individuals, businesses and corporate organizations are welcome. May the good Lord bless you more as you propagate the kingdom message. For prayer and counseling, you can call 0244-461-471. Remain blessed.